me, how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. The podcast Rolling Stone said initiates profound discussions with rock and metal artists, allowing fans to discover the creative workflow of their favorite musicians and understand the factors that make the band succeed or fall from fame. Yep, and we're all sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom company needs. Get a hundred off your entire bill. It's called CP Pod at Dark Fusion Systems. Comment links for the podcast below. Thank you guys. Now let's go to our feature presentation. Episode 300 was featuring Mac from Junk Bunny. At that time, he was a one-man show. Now, with a brand new album called Starting Over coming out back in May and a full band behind him, we go into the band, we go into what's happened since then, we go into the album, and we also talk about how they got suspended on TikTok for 10 years. Yeah, we're serious. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. We're at about episode like 530, 531, 532 maybe, but we're going to do a call back all the way to our 300th episode because back then we had one guy on the podcast. His name is Mac and the band is Junk Bunny, but now he's got a brand new album out and two new band members to make a full band in there with us today. So please welcome Mac, Isaac, and Seth from the band Junk Bunny, the podcast. So, guys, welcome, and Mac, welcome back. Dude, Kevin, thank you for having us, man. It's great to be back. It's great to have you guys back on, and you know exactly where I'm asking my first question, because the last time we had you on was our 300th episode, which I have to relook at my sheet again to know exactly what day that was when it came out, which would have been on May 10th of 2022, so that was over two years ago. So, you got to give me the story of Junk Bunny from two years ago till now. I mean, we got two new members here. I want to hear the story. Yeah, I'll pick up where we left off, I guess. I was fresh off of having my drummer quit on me. I was I was looking for a drummer. I remember saying that on the podcast. I was like, if you're a drummer, hit me up, dude, if you're in Austin, because I'm trying to find a new drummer. Uh, so since then, I played, I played my last show with my old drummer, on the same day I met Isaac. So Isaac was playing in another band at that same gig and he was playing in one of the bands before us. And I just like, I showed up at that gig. I was all fucking mad at my drummer and shit. <laughs> and I was just hanging out with him. I was like, oh, I'm Mac. He was like, I'm Isaac. What's up? And we just started like hanging out. And eventually I was like, yeah, this is our last show with this drummer. I am just trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. And he texted me if like a, like a little I texted you like every month or so. I was like checking in and see if we had a new drummer, <laughs> how things were going. Yeah. And he's like, I can fill in for a little while if you want. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So we started rehearsing and then I eventually just stole him from his other band. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so. Straight highway robbery, but this is not highway robbery of, you know, Fast and Furious style VCRs from 2001. No, you stole a freaking drummer, man. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and then Seth, we've been friends since high school and he was just my roommate. We were living together and uh, I was like, dude, I, I just, I'm trying to find a bass player. And he was like, I'll do it. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. So that's how I got these two guys. And since then we, yeah, we, I was just say we've probably been playing. I think we started playing guitar at the same age. Yeah. Like when we were like, what, nine years old? Or eight. Something like that. I was eight, eight when I started. Old, yes. I was in the second grade. So. He, he's a better guitar player than I am, honestly. So wow. he is a good, good on bass, basically, is what I'm trying to say. He uh, comes up with some nice little licks. So is it really the thing where it's like great guitarist means good on bass no matter what? Is that just like an easy transition? Yes. What do you think? <laughs> I think so. I think bass is way easier than guitar. I'll go ahead and say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense just because, you know, you're dealing with less strings overall. And I think sometimes, you know, those licks or those bass lines can be a little bit more straightforward. Where you don't have to go full on shredding, you know, solo at the exact same time. So there's a lot to be made there. But sometimes it's weird, Mac, where it's, you know, you're searching for new band members. You're searching for a new way to make sure Junk Bunny becomes the best it possibly can be. And sometimes the best people you can find are the ones that are literally right next to you. They're right around you, like your roommate or just some other drummer on a show that you randomly saw at the your previous drummer's last show, hit it off with them, and then all of a sudden, he just kept checking in. So clearly, Isaac really, really wanted to be in this band if he kept checking in like, hey, man, hey, hey, you still find a drummer yet? You still good? Right. I mean, I actually set up that show that I met him on the... <laughs> 
the booking agent like called or like emailed me and asked if they could join the thing. I was like, I already have like three songs of theirs liked on Spotify. So I was like already loving this band. I was like, yeah, get them on. <laughs> That doesn't yeah. surprise me at all, though. That's just, you know, it, it's crazy how the world kind of works in that sort of way where, you you know, you know about the music, you you like this band and through sheer happenstance, you get put in the situations where you get to meet each other. You get to see how each other is. You get to you build that, that chemistry up together. And then before you know it, it just so happens that you guys all end up joining the band together and you wow. create what is now Junk Bunny going forward. Like there's a lot here. And there's a lot of bands that, you know, when they are struggling to find new members or they're struggling with member changes, it's like the biggest issue ever. Of course, because you're trying to find the right person. You're having to go out and search, maybe online. Maybe you're going to be trying to set up auditions for people locally in your area. You're trying to find all these people and you all have to make sure that, you know, you click together because you might be the best musicians overall, but if there's no chemistry there, then the music's just not going to sound good. Yeah, I got lucky with Isaac, but Seth was definitely uh, like an easy, an easy because he'd been working with us when like with the other two band members doing a bunch of stuff already. Anyway, he filmed, edited, and put out uh, our two music videos that we had for Sedona or not Sedona, uh, Summer Song, another Summer Song, and See You in Heaven. He did those videos by himself. He took all our photos, like all our photo shoot stuff. So he was already there, like doing a bunch of stuff for us. So he was like a super easy like definitely made sense to try to do something with Seth. So now Seth, are you still doing that stuff for the band? You know, vi music videos, photography, or now it's like, you know what? No, I'm a part of this band now. Oh, Somebody well, else's duty. It's a little harder to take photos of us whenever I'm on stage. <laughs> uh, so we luckily have somebody else that is really good at that. Uh, who also happens to be his girlfriend. But yeah. um, anyway, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I still, we, I definitely help out like setting up, like if we're setting up lights for, to shoot something or like, you know, he's like a lot of the brains behind setting up like different shots and, and stuff like that. So that makes sense though. And, and not only does it work out where, you know, especially Seth, you have the eye and you have the mindset for that, but of course being the band, helping make the music as well, and really being a full part of it, you get that embedded knowledge that, you know, maybe Max working with or maybe Isaac's working with when it comes to the idea for these music videos, for these shoots on how to actually position this to get the idea that you want to show up properly the way the music is being presented towards the audience, whether it's, you know, through those pictures, through the live show with the light setup, or just through the uh, video setup overall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. We do video for like work also. So it's just, it makes it a lot easier to like have the knowledge about it, like make content and stuff, especially now. Oh yeah. Especially now where there's so it's, it's crazy where, I mean, even though the internet has been that way where content has been, you know, more and more becoming more prevalent as a way to get your music out there since the invention of MySpace, basically. But since the pandemic and since short form video, like TikTok, Instagram reels and YouTube shorts have become so popular there is so much more pressure put on artists to create just content so that they can essentially be seen on the internet and have a chance to connect with people that are just, you know, scrolling through and hopefully maybe because of the way you created it, because of the caption, because of the content in it, that algorithm ends up picking up and putting in front of people that you really want to get in front of that could potentially really like your music. Yeah, dude, we just got like a couple of days ago, we, we dropped this one uh, TikTok Huh. And it got us fucking, it, we got suspended on TikTok for like 10 years. Or yeah, something. it was like 10 years suspension. <laughs> we, so we, we, we put these, I don't know if you like looked at our Instagram or anything, but we're like focusing more on like making these like short form videos that have, because we just dropped this album. We're like mm -hmm. putting all these songs out and making these videos for them. And we did one for our, our song Taste. And the caption on it was, uh, send this to your friend who hates the government. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fine on instagram it was fine on uh like youtube shorts but tiktok like the next day hit us with the 10 year suspension yeah, it sucks so we're trying to figure that out right now that that's kind of weird to me just not the fact that you know the length of suspension but just the fact that it happened overall because you look at some of the content on tiktok i mean having a caption for some band trying to promote their music by saying tag the, or like take this or send this to a friend that hates the government i've seen some shit on there where it's just like, it's just like how are how is this being promoted 
whether yeah, it's yeah, you know okay. overly sexualized content or even overly political content, even some stuff that you know if you ever put it on TV, then you would end up be- being put in jail by the FCC. But <laughs> just a simple thing where it says tag your friend if you know whatever, and you're getting banned for ten years. But then Instagram and YouTube are like, eh, that's funny. What the yeah. hell? So I guess our next move is we'll all like get naked or something, and get super sexual, and then we'll be okay. We'll start oiling up Isaac probably. Yeah. I'm really just, hairy, but we can try it. <laughs> just just oil yourselves up, wear speedos, and just start you know dr- like dry humping the ground like Jack Black did when he was dressed as Thor. That's yeah. probably what it would look like. Yeah. Don't take our if anybody's listening. Don't take our idea. That's that's our next our next batch of reels is going to be all that. So. It's just going to be overly suggestive videos by Junk Bunny just to really get you in the mood for the music. Or it's just, you know, just robe, like wearing a robe in a nice chair, fully open with a cigar. It's like, yeah. Have you seen that guy on Instagram who's always like giving advice to local bands? He's always like waving that cigar around. He's always like, don't do local band shit. Have you seen that guy? Yeah, I've seen that guy. We could do shit like that guy. Do that. Do his vibe. Just naked. (laughs) <laughs> just do it just do his vibe or honestly just it, it's kind of weird but you could potentially take all the, a lot of the like the more popular ones that are on those instagram reels tiktok youtube shorts just some of the crazy stuff they do and just do it but just do it in a weirdly suggestive nature just to see what would happen like uh, yeah the don't do local band shit just do it maybe not even with a full cigar with like a bubblegum cigar edit like some smoke to come out of it and then just do it real slow and just in the background, just make sure there's some lo-fi music there to really set the mood. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really good idea. <laughs> it's not, it's all in. Yeah. N- so. n- then after that, you know, then we're going to see Isaac looking at a video of probably Mac or Seth doing something stupid and calling them Delulu for it. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you have it. Then he'll call you. Know, then Mac, he'll call you like Delulu Pro Max, and you just come up with a subscription that says Delulu Pro Max, and like, what's the price? Subscribe to Junk Bunny. <laughs> Junk Bunny only fans. We could start too. Oh yeah, there you go, man. Yeah. Uh, honestly, if you did it in a specific way, that <laughs> might really work. Because this, this is where I'm going with this. I still okay. remember this was yeah earlier this year. When I kept seeing, like, freaking John Cena apparently started an OnlyFans. And I was like, what is going on? And it was all to promote that movie, Ricky Stenicki, where he just... I, I was like, okay, I got to go check this out now. Just because if John Cena is being this ridiculous to promote it, there's got to be something funny about the movie. Was the movie okay? Eh, it was fine. Anytime John Cena was in it, it was freaking hysterical. So I was like, okay, now I'm even more curious to see where this is going to go. But it was him literally just... I can't remember what the, he was even posting on there. I just looked in like the Twitter response and they posted the picture of it. It wasn't anything like overly suggestive. It was just hysterical to see that he had an OnlyFans account under the name Ricky Stinicky. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty fun. Well, anyway, we're trying to fucking sort out our TikTok thing. Yeah. But definitely that's one thing we've been doing is trying to focus on like these short form videos. I bit the bullet because social media is like definitely our least favorite part about this whole thing. But where we decided to just get after it. We have all these songs that we think are pretty good, so we may as well get to promoting them and trying to get them out there in front of people. We end up having fun while we do it, though. Uh, yeah. Boarding it, even though it's hot when we do it outside most yeah. of the time. It's like 100 degrees here right now, but... Sweating. Well, we had to figure out, like, the way that we want to do it. And yeah. Instead of trying to, like, copy and paste mm-hmm. what all these other, like, kind of, like, corny videos we see on Instagram are. Yeah, we try not to make it feel like a grind or something we have to do. Just have fun with it. Because, I mean, once you get out there and you start making the videos, it's fun. Yeah. It's like, we're, it's fun to set up and shoot and go to, like, different locations and do this stuff. So, that's the main thing is just keep doing stuff that we enjoy, you know. See, because I've had conversations about this with other artists before regarding how social media, especially short form content, has really overtaken it to where so many other bands are focusing so much more of their efforts on creating short form content and creating that for social media versus maybe even sometimes creating the music or playing live shows. And again, it's all based on how the, the way that the world is working in music delivery. And there is the positivity behind it that I think you guys are seeing now where you're finding ways to make it work for yourselves and how you want to do it and have fun with it versus how I think a lot of other artists end up seeing it too, which is just 
it's another piece that you, has been added on to the overall uh, weight that is making music, the burden that is trying to get your music out there, which it is a love that you do, but it is harder on the business sense if you don't want to do the business side of it. And yeah. when it comes to trying to get you know popular and get noticed on those platforms, so many people aren't being as creative and they're just kind of taking over and uh, what's the best way to put it? Kind of copying what's being popular. So it's not as uh, genuine. It's not as authentic. And it ends up being a struggle. I had a conversation with Lauren Babick from Red Hand Denial, and she's like saying the same thing where it's, yeah, she could do all these different like, you know, TikTok trends, but just like, and then it just feels like overall work. And then it takes away from the enjoyment that is the art of making music. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to lean, I mean, to a certain extent, you got to lean into the cringe a little bit. Like we have fun making the videos and I think they look fine by themselves, but they will probably do better if you put that caption on there that's like POV, send this to your fucking, you know, mom or whatever. Like <laughs> you got to do do that a little bit. So we're, we're, we're figuring it out. But to kind of get back to like the timeline, I guess, because yeah. I kind of went up on content there. So after we, I, uh, these guys got brought into the fold we just started like writing new stuff, just working on on new music and just grinding it out and putting the album together. So for the past two years, we had been just working on new music and then we started recording it with our friend Roy McCraney, who produced our whole album. He's a wizard at like logic, using Logic Pro and just recording and like he's been doing, I've known him since I was like 12 or something. And he's just, ever since then, he's just been working on like producing and, and making music. So it was, uh, we went to go do some demos with him for like four of these new songs we've been working on. And he was just going to like do them for free or whatever. I was going to pay him like 50 bucks or something just to do some quick demos. And they turned out so good. I was like, bro, we just got to do the whole album. <laughs> so we spent like a year, a little over a year, just, he was the only dude working on that album. He did the whole thing by himself. And I think, did you get a chance to listen to the album at all? I've got, I listened to the whole thing. I mean, I've, I got, I got a, I don't know how many pages of notes I have on the whole thing. Which I thought I had them here, but now I don't know where they are. I had them on okay. one sheet, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" Well, that's not the sheet I wanted. Yeah, I'd be I interested to hear what you think about it, especially because you. I remember you said you liked uh, like summer song and all those old songs that we had from when I was like 17 or whatever. Well, funny enough, when I looked at it, because I'm looking through it, it's okay. So this is kind of funny. I have my old sheet from when we first re recorded this uh, back in 2022. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I still have, like, in my new one, I've got songs one through two done. And then on the other one, I'm like, oh, this is weird. I've got, now it starts at song three, and I've got three all the way through, I think it was 12. Yeah, there's 12 songs on there, I think. Yeah, so I did go through the whole entire thing. Okay, sweet. What'd you think? The, when I was listening through it, there was a kind, there was a certain consistency that I was trying to figure out exactly maybe where some of this inspiration came from because I was listening. I'm like, it has a little bit more of this melodic sensibility behind it, especially from the vocal patterns. It also still sometimes had some of that pop from the pop punk standpoint of it, but there were some more drawn out like emo and post hardcore moments of the whole entire album. So I got to ask, were you inspired by like AFI from around the mid two thousands while writing this? Because it really picked up in that kind of regard of this is a huge monumental like influence that I'm picking up on here. I don't really know where a lot of the inspiration for like the new sound came from. I was like, when I was writing this stuff, I wasn't really listening to anything. I was just like, I would, I was working on the songs. Like when I was in my car or if I was going on a run, I was I was only listening to the demos I made of these songs and just working on the song. I wasn't really listening to like any other bands and stuff. And I don't know, cause I stopped listening to like pop punk and stuff when I was like when I turned like 20, I kind of grew out of like the Blink-182 phase and like that kind of stuff. And I've really only like for the past couple of years been listening to like pretty heavy like metal. So I I don't like I've never listened to AFI. So I don't know where a lot like a lot of my like inspiration came from. I think a lot of it had to do with Roy, our producer. He kind of put his touch on it and kind of, I think he had a big, a big influence on the sound for this album overall. I may have to find Roy's contact for and ask him, you know, are you a big fan of AFI's 2006 album, December Underground? Because 
He it, is. Like, he listens to like a bunch of metal and stuff like that. So he's we've never. I mean, what do you think? Not really? Not, I mean, for me personally, no. Yeah, not I haven't really. I have like a you know a handful of AFI songs, too, but I don't really like. <laughs> I would say it influenced our writing. Um, I don't know. I will say that sound guy in San Antonio. There's this one guy. Every time we play, he's like, "You guys remind me of Thursday." Thursday. Thursday. He always calls us. There, are, there are a few like riffs in there, especially on the Drop D songs that are like, or you know, that are like a little bit more kind of Thursday-ish, but uh, we definitely took it a little bit of a heavier route, though, yeah. than the old stuff, you know? Yeah, you definitely took a little bit of a heavier route, but, like, in the same time you took it in that heavier route, it kind of had a little bit more of that, like, just based on sometimes the pacing of songs, and a lot of times, in my opinion, Mac, just kind of the vocal pairings working with, it had the melodic, a little bit more drawn-out style to yeah. kind of let you sink into the songs more and sink into the album instead of, you know, really just hearing it and then trying to take it right at face value when you listen to it for the first time. Yeah, I, we wanted it to be like a lot of layers, a lot of texture. We're like, because I listen to the album a lot, like with headphones on, because I like to write stuff that I would want to listen to. Mm -hmm. So I've listened to this album like a, a ton of times with headphones in. And you're right, like when you start from beginning to end, you just kind of like, there's a lot of, texture and stuff i feel like you can kind of just sink into it it's pretty nice roy did a phenomenal job with the with the mixes and all the layers and we we did a lot of stuff with synths this time too like on the old stuff there was no keys no synths or anything mm -hmm. and this time we we kind of went heavy onto the uh like atmospheric uh aspect of it i guess Atmospheric is a good way to put it too. And I think those synths really help create that overall vibe. But one thing that makes sense too is because when I was uh, listening to the album, if I was uh, working my full-time job, like I'd be going like this and I'd have my other computer right here, album streaming and everything. But if I was very focused in on work, it was real, a lot harder to kind of get into the album because if I'm just listening in passing, there's so many, like you said, so many layers in there. You're not really getting the full. We lost you, it. Kevin. Hold up. We lost oh. your sound. Is my did I kick my sound out? Is it back on? I hope. Can you uh, hear us? I can hear you guys. Yeah. Okay, we can't hear you. Oh no! Uh, oh no! Oh, it's my internet. Hold up. I was like, how did the that happen where my sound goes out, but yours is perfect? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, but where I was going with that is like, because I was if I'm at work and I had the album pull up my other computer and I'm focusing on you know having to get whatever spreadsheets I was working on done. You really can't get into the layers that this album has that you guys really created on this. But once, you know, I put the headphones on and started actually writing this stuff out, listening to it through the mixer and being more immersed in the experience, then you can pick up on the layers. Then you can get a little bit more lost in it. And that's where the album really opens up. And I get where at times, you know, bands like, oh, you know, when you listen to it, you want to hit right away and it just have people like that and like it right then and there. But if you don't have really layers to it, you know, it's going to potentially become like one of those like bubble cum pop songs that just goes away. Yeah, I would say I just realized this number one, probably biggest influence, like band that had the biggest influence on this album for us is probably Thornhill. Have you heard of Thornhill? Oh, yeah. OK, because we were huge. Well, I don't know about you, but me and me, Seth and Roy are like pretty big Thornhill guys. And their album Heroin, like we use that as a as a big reference point for like what do we want this album to sound like? It was heroin. We want it to sound like Thornhill, kind of, because they do some. I think we're kind of similar to them now in a way. We're getting heavier. We're getting we're getting like they they started off pretty heavy and they're getting a little less like they're not going heavy. Yeah, they're getting kind of less heavy, but we're getting a little. We started off not so heavy and we're kind of medium. I feel like we're kind of. That's a band I would love to go on tour with, dude. I'm actually seeing them in July again for like the third time. I fucking love Horn Hill. Wait a minute, who are they playing with in July again? Because I, I, I they're just... playing with Invent Animate, which is like my yeah. dude, Heavener, their last album is like my favorite album. It's like my album of the year. I love that album. Uh so I'm psyched for this show. It's Thornhill. I there's a, a band that's opening that I don't know who they are, but it's them, Thornhill, Invent Animate, and then Northlane. Oh, the opening band is Wind Waker. Wind Waker, yeah. I don't know who that is. I interviewed them right. I've interviewed them already like two years ago when they put out their debut album. And then I interviewed them like a month ago, like, well, from the recording of this. So that's pretty they, sweet. Are they good? They, they're fun. They're, they'll be a lot of fun. And, but what I know you're talking about with Thornhill, though, too, because when Thornhill started out, they were uh, they were heavier. They had that heavy sound. But when heroin came out, it was, you know, or heroin, whatever, you, however you want to pronounce it, I probably messed yeah. it up. But 
it's like they got less heavy, but they end up having a little bit more of that like vibing kind of drive, which really kind of brought the heaviness down a little bit where you guys, you guys weren't as heavy, but then you guys picked it up, but you still have more of that like vibing melodic, you know, atmospheric feel, which is what Thornhill picked up on, which is where I can see that clash of overall influence really coming in now. Yeah, I think another probably good inspiration as far as like the atmosphere and like synthy stuff goes and melodic stuff stuff would be Loathe. Loathe is another mm-hmm. one of our favorites. Yeah, I can so. see that too. Way heavier than us. Way heavier than <laughs> us, but we definitely take some influence. I just can't scream. That's my problem. I don't know. I don't even know if I would if I could. But I mean, you know, I think I think those are probably some two of our like biggest uh, influences on this album. Again, that's kind of it's interesting just to see, you know, where you guys were, especially Mac, where you were when I first interviewed you two years ago and now where you are at this point in time after the release of this new album from back in May. But it does take a very interesting turn just given the fact that, you know, we see a lot of bands when they're trying to form new or they're trying to go. something. It's always they usually start out heavier and then they kind of mellow out or lighten out as they go on. You guys, it's like, okay, you started out more in the lighter, a little more of the, uh, you know, like sparky side, I would say. Now it's more atmospheric. It's heavier. It has that certain vibe to it. And it has the ability to even get heavier, given the fact that you're using influences like Thornhill, who if you go to their older stuff, is going to be heavier, and Loathe, which still has that vibing atmospheric feel, but especially on more of the heavier metal, sometimes close to hardcore style of things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I, I try to be careful because I don't want to lean into like the metal aspect of it too much because then you start to lose people. And I like to I like to keep it kind of like. I don't know, I didn't want to. Yeah, because yeah. Roy, like he wanted to do some stuff like go heavy. And I'm like, man, we got to be we got like I always tell Isaac, no double kick band. I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> lean. I don't want to lean too far into it because I just uh, I don't know. I kind of want to stick to a certain kind of. Some Almost like <laughs> poppy, not like not pop, but approachable. People like a wider audience, I guess, is what you would yeah, say. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to kind of I like to blend stuff, I guess, or we like to blend stuff. So I don't want to lean too far into one direction or the other, I guess. I, I like where we're at right now. It's kind of like right down the middle. It's there's heavy parts and there's not so heavy parts. It's very melodic and catchy, I think. So See, I, I could kind of see you're coming from there. But again, especially from an artist, it all depends upon what you want to do with your art, because you never know what happens if in another two, three years, you guys just get all of a sudden the inspiration to screw that rule. We're going double kicks today. But at the same time, it, what it gives you the ability to do is especially understand where you don't want to necessarily go heavy. And like what you said, Isaac, where you still want it to set, potentially be on more of the approachable standpoint from a more larger audience. But what you have the ability to do is, is go in those heavier aspects of metal and use some of those from every time, every now and again, to put it as an influence. So you continue to expand the sound, but then it's more of a, it's not the base of the overall sound. It's more of this little complimentary piece for this one specific part of one specific song, because it makes sense. It's stuff like that, where you can really not only expand your overall music side of things, play around with other styles, but still keep it in exactly where you want to while having the diversity of overall sound to continue to build up the overall repertoire that is Junk Bunny's uh, back catalog or future catalog. Yeah, I think we have a pretty unique sound. Yeah, I think I we think have. So. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think we're a metal band. Would you say that? I don't. I, I definitely don't I, think. Would, so. would I call you guys a metal band? Absolutely not. Yeah. See, that's like. That's what I'm trying to avoid, I guess. I don't want people to start thinking of us We're as like a metal band. We're yeah. just influenced by a lot of metal. Yeah, and, and again, it makes sense to, it all depends upon what you guys want to go for. It all depends upon what the overall vision of the band is, what the overall goal is, what the overall, you know, core style is and how you want to build off of it. Yeah. Because who knows, maybe, you know, in the future, you guys decide to try and put something that's a little bit lighter in the sound again and just amplify that a little bit more, still keeping the core of what you guys have. But then again, having these little different little bit of sprinkles of we're going to try this here we're going to try this here but at the end when you listen to it you still know it's going to be junk bunny sound because it's still difficult to try and find a band that you guys really sound like i mean if i'm coming up with influences i'm not coming up with band influences i'm coming up with specific albums or specific songs or specific time periods of bands where they were going to be trying something a little bit different they were trying a different style out there's no like consistency behind you guys sound and remind me of this band, but that's a great thing because then that speaks more of the individual identity that is Junk Bunny. 
Yeah, for sure. I think another big thing is Isaac's drums because he kind of he's kind I'm, of a jazzy drummer. I mean, yeah, kind of. I grew up with jazz and like funk, and then I got really inspired by a lot of new metal. Um, big new metal guy, so I kind of brought those influences into this band. For I, th sure. I think like maybe, maybe our heaviest song on that album is a song called Taste, and on the pre-chorus, Isaac does this thing where he like on the ride and the hi hats, he goes like. Tick, tick, tick. I was like, dude, I've never seen somebody do that move before. It's just like a cool, like, it's just like a cool unique like, uh, drum part. I've never seen anybody. It's like, like the Rev, except without the double kicks. Oh, like yeah. Maybe part. Rev does that. I, I, yeah, I can't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely not as good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the pre-course of that one, it definitely had this more, especially from the drums, it had that more like indie rock meets jazz meets somewhat metal kind of flavor to it. But again, that's a whole interesting perspective from from an artist overall because I, I'll use the jazz portion specifically. What artists, especially in today's rock, metal, even you know alternative scene, are trying to use jazz or use jazz influences to that kind of a nature? I'm pretty sure they're in there, but they're so much more hidden where you're not really seeing anything as overt as you guys use it. And potentially, you guys could even go more than that beyond what you guys did on this album, but it shows just another potential little aspect that Junk Bunny can use to grow the overall sound, not only what you guys did here, but of course going forward, which is always one thing I love about an album is if it's good, but also makes me want to wonder what's going to come next because there's so many more possibilities still yet to be had. We're cooking, bro. We're cooking some new stuff up. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I, I like, we just put this album out. I'm definitely not even like, thinking about when we're going to start recording new stuff right now but i am starting to think about recording new stuff right now like it's yeah. we, we've been we're working on some stuff dude i'm pretty excited for the whatever's coming next at that point in time does whatever comes natural you guys do that i've had bands in the podcast where i've asked them like oh yeah you guys are coming out with this album. they're like dude we're already recording the next one it's like what oh. yeah they're like yeah we already we just got done with the recording session for like the like the third album and the second one it has yet to be released and that's what i'm supposed to be talking about. i'm like what the hell it all depends upon <laughs> when the inspiration strikes and when you guys are able to write this stuff and come up with this so i mean if you if you they aren't even thinking about you know recording but you're also thinking about trying to record at the same time too whatever your inspiration is whatever your you know idea is just lean into it and let it happen yeah i think so i mean this last album literally took was like the entire last two years of my life yeah it was a it was a big process long progress so well, that, and that's wrapping in like all the writing too like yeah if we just pol like we can polish the next songs that we're writing for you know however long yeah however, we're some guys kind of writing this wave but yeah some guys like i i know some dudes here that like they can write a song and like they can they just like they'll just write like a song a day and just like boom 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 like like come out with these songs but the way we do it is we kind of like we'll work on a song for like a year and just like try to get it to the point where it's like okay like we can't make this any better and so we're just gonna like record it now and that's kind of takes a, more time than i think uh, other people put into like writing their stuff yeah because i've noticed that when we play like if we play a new song over and over again it's just like you slowly kind of develop the things that you like to do or you change something, you change one little thing here and there, and then like until you get to kind of you settle at this point where it's like you play it the same way every time, and it's like the song is kind of locked in. Yeah, at that point, I don't think we could just like write a song and like record it next month. Yeah, because I would hate if we like put out a song and then like a month after we drop it, I'm like, oh, we could have done this and it would have been better. I would hate that. Like all these songs on this album, we lived with them for so long. Like I could, I wouldn't change one thing about any of those songs. It, well, depending upon how you want to write these songs, I mean, it. there's always the pros and cons of it. The pros of getting it out, you know, training out quicker songs and not spending as much time on them is you get more music out there. You get more opportunities to be heard. You get more opportunities to potentially experiment with different ideas. But then the exact same thing comes up where you just brought up Mac where on the negative side, if they're not as good, then they really don't even hit. Or if you're listening to them and then a month later, you think that they could be better, you know, then you're really not that happy with it. But on the flip side, if you take longer like you guys did, sure, you might not have, you know, as many songs come out. It might take that time and people might be asking, where's more junk by music? Where's more music? And you're still working on this stuff. But then on the positive side of it, because I still remember listening to, I think it was something that Ronnie Radke had said, 
Because after like 2017, after they came out with Coming Home as an album, I mean, they've released just singles up to this point, except for the new Ronald album coming out at the end of the month. But what the main thing is, is I think he said was he's waiting to create these songs and he's making sure that he can't do any better before putting them out there. And yeah. when that happens, if again, if it's, you know, you're put, you're not taking too much time and just trying to, you know, fix what's not broken, but really amplify every piece that you want to make sure that this part hits the way you want it to. This part sounds the way you really want it to. When other people are listening, if they're picking up on the meaning and the overall emotion that you're trying to project, then you release it, then you know you absolutely hit on it. And again, using Fallen Reverse as the example, look at what they've done ever since 2019. Just to the moon. Yeah. Do people like that guy or not? I can't tell. Ronnie Racky? Yeah. Like at you? I mean, he's, I, you know, I don't really know that much about him. Well, I, I saw him, I saw him play live with Disturbed like two months ago. And he was, they were really good, man. They were almost better than Disturbed. And I love Disturbed. Yeah, I've seen Fallen Reverse like six or seven times already, and every time yeah. I go see him, it's always a fun time. Just there's yeah. always something. There's always something that, that he yells at the crowd about something. I was there the time when someone wore a shirt that said "Fuck Ronnie Radke," and he said his daddy's biker gang was gonna come beat the guy up. That was funny. <laughs> Who's yeah, your favorite band? Funny. Who's your My favorite, favorite band? Rise yeah. Against. Oh sh! Hey, we we talked about this last. Time. I remember now. You had the Rise Against shirt on last time. I remember we we talked about that because set like I we talked about Appeal to Reason is like. Yeah, one of my most like influential albums of my life. I've been listening to that since I was like ten. He's the exact same. We were listen. We were probably both listening to that album all throughout our like, childhood. I'll give, I'll give you one show. of these, man. I'll give you one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. That album freaking changed like my whole path, dude. I feel like. <laughs> So that, yeah, because that was me once I heard "Suffer in the Witness." That's still my favorite album of all time. I don't think it gets any better than that. It's just like. If for Rise Against, I'm like, it's still got that like current feel to where it beat went with more of the polished sound, more of the poetic sound to it, but it still had the roughness of the punk sound from back, like from the original albums. And it just molded everything together perfectly. It's like, whether you like the older Rise Against style, the newer Rise Against style, Suffering the Witness is the perfect spot for everybody. Maybe I need to give that one more of a chance because I just love Appeal to Reason so much. I never like listen to any other Rise yeah, Against <laughs> focus on Appeal to Reason, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, See, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to knock appeal the reason either i mean savior is my favorite song of all time so <laughs> i know that's probably generic for rise against people but i'm sticking with it yeah, yeah. no it's i mean there's a reason why it's like their biggest yeah. song it's such a it's good song. It's such a banger it slaps yeah. so hard that guy's lyricism is just that's so almost the hard. best of all time like, yeah that whole album that guy's lyrics are just so good that dude is a poet bro it, that's that's why it's like i remember someone asked me like how would you describe them i'm like because they're still punk rock but they're not as like brash or as punk as what they used to be or what really punk still kind of has but i looked at them like it's either polished punk or poetic punk because his tim's lyricism is so profoundly po po poetic where you listen to it you just get lost in it whether you yeah. agree with the politics or not you get lost and you can actually understand the idea behind it and where the overall thought is coming from yeah they definitely know how to paint a picture. I was about to say, it paints a picture in your mind when you're listening to it. It just makes me think of like being eight or being like 10 and playing like Black Ops 2 <laughs> and just just listening to fucking Appeal to Reason, bro. Oh, it's so good. I, I will give Isaac some conceptual because I know you said you love Disturbed. Disturbed was my favorite band in middle school. And <laughs> school, then once that I, was high school for me, dude. <laughs> and then once I got into high school, it was. I remember I was driving to school like every single day with my brother, my our two neighbors, and one of the this one other guy. And it was like every day, either going to or coming back, we'd listen to Alternative Radio Station and Savior by Rise Against would play. And I'm like, you don't turn this song off because I yeah, didn't like it that yeah, much. And I was sure. like, okay. Then it took over. Yeah. I was a big Rage Against the Machine and Disturbed guy driving into school at like 8 a.m. just blasting that stuff. <laughs> just driving to get pissed off like, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me, I'll say, meanwhile, you have Mac and Seth over here driving up to school, just playing, blasting Appeal to Reason, wondering whether or not playing Call of Duty Black Ops at the moment. Yeah. Every morning on the bus, I would listen to either um, Once More Around the Sun by Mastodon or The Hunter by Mastodon. I had an hour bus ride to school every morning, and it was always one of those two albums. I would sleep on the bus and listen to one of those two. That's not a bad idea. 
just yeah. sleep, listen to something heavy. <sighs> I absorb those albums, dude. I know like every little texture piece of those albums, bro. They're so good. Yeah. Well, now to all the fine children out there that still have to take the bus to school, when you return to school in the fall, if you have an hour long bus ride, if you have a half hour long bus ride, I really don't care how long it is. Be sure to put on your headphones. Be sure to put in your earbuds or whatever you do. Or if you're one of those crazy people that decides to use their speaker on their phone, just put it up to hear and listen to it. Listen to Starting Over by Junk Bunny, the whole album all the way through and enjoy because you can finally get to experience it the way it's intended to by experience its layers junk bunny is shrek ogres have layers junk bunny has layers you get it <laughs> they all have layers if you've got 43 minutes bro give it a rip try it out it's um i think it's pretty good i can't complain <laughs> whether you got four minutes or 43 minutes still listen to it <laughs> what is it what do you think your favorite on the album is uh honestly and this is kind of weird, but sleepwalking is one of my yeah. favorites on the album. It's just so, <laughs> and I'm not even on it. Like it's all like program drums, and I just, it's just so meaningful. I don't know. It's really good. It's a well written song. Yeah, that one we leaned super. We were like, let's have one song where we just go hard on like atmosphere, since there's not even drums. Well, technically there's drums on it, but it's just like we put some like some like pretty spacey shit on it. But it's like. You know, we went heavy on like, let's just make a dreamy sounding song and sleepwalking was just like the perfect name, I feel like. What about you? I mean, yeah, I mean, I love sleepwalking. It's one of my favorites, but it's in a different category, right? It's not, it's almost like not even the same genre. So, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I love it. But it's a nice break. It's got to be one of the heavier ones, like for me, like either it's either like taste make me smile or suffocator, I would think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Which Out of those three, definitely <laughs> Suffocator. Yeah, I love Suffocator. Mostly because it's fun for me to play, but also it's... <laughs> that song popped up a couple weeks ago in this town in Germany. I could see it on our like <laughs> Spotify for Artists like analytics. All of a sudden, that song went to like the number two most popular spot on our Spotify. I was like, what the hell? Somebody put it on a playlist called BBL Drizzy. <laughs> and there were these two towns in Germany for like a week, people were like bumping it. And it got like 10,000 streams in like a week. And then just like, so I guess they took it off the playlist or something because fucking nobody's listening to it anymore. But I thought that was kind of funny. That is kind of funny. And honestly, Suffocator was my favorite song in the whole record too. A lot of people, that's their favorite, yeah. which I didn't expect. I thought people would, I, didn't, I, didn't, I thought that would kind of be one that people even, sleep on. Even before we released it, like the friends that would come out to gig said Suffocator was their favorite. Yeah, it's, What's cool? like, it's, it's, it's it's just cool live too. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. I'll hit like a you just hit like a crab stance on that breakdown. It's got the most just energy fun. for sure because that breakdown. It's what, fun. What really got me on that song? It was right from the get go because I heard the intro riff and I immediately got thrown back in a full on nostalgia mode from like 2006, 2007, yeah. playing any WWE SmackDown versus Raw yeah. video game. When this was before everything that happened with him, but when Chris Benoit would come out and that intro riff that din -na 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 -na, I'm like, this has to be picked up by this. It sounded so <sighs> much inspired. I was like, oh my god, I haven't heard this in the longest time, <laughs> and wow. I was hooked right then and there. And then as we get into the rest of this, like once we get into the verses. I'm like, the lick of that kind of goes away. Baseline comes in more prominent. And it reminded me of the song Love Like Winter by AFI. And I was like, now how in the hell did we go from WWE intro music to 2006 AFI while still having it sound like Junk Bunny overall? I don't know, but it worked. What's that song called? I got to check it out, that AFI song. Love Like Winter. Can you say that? Yeah. Yeah, it's I gotta check that out. That song, I mean, that's just a fun riff. That's just a fun when it comes when that like the way Roy sauced it up on that intro, bro, sounds like a fucking like alarm going off or something. It's just cool. That that's why I want to ask him too. I'm like, are, Roy, are you a WWE fan? Because it would make so much sense because <laughs> no one has even touched that idea since like 2007. I have not heard it since, and I finally heard it like the other day when I'm working through this. I'm like. Yeah. What like, the harmonics fuck? are just like harmonics are fun. Like yeah, cool. People, people don't really like do that anymore. I feel like Gojira yeah, does them a little bit, but yeah. like they're like heavy. a lot of metal artists do, but like oh yeah, metal artists. But but like yeah, nothing. I mean that was kind of like a 
feel like a 2000s thing like yeah. Seos say, say and use a lot of harmonics or, on their records even like popular rock bands like what's that that um don't know what you're doing oh that's uh, uh, you get all the way. oh yeah uh, well, that riff is like all hard. you know how to man. play it yeah i don't dude rip that riff real quick right now <laughs> oh, right, like, you see, all right, right now bro i love i can't even play he can play i play, i love this riff bro it's like hit that let's see if i can do it I gotta blame Zoom for this one because the sound is not coming through on my end at all from it. Either way, bro, that riff is just like that's just cool. Harmonics are just cool, and nobody really like makes a main riff out of harmonics like that anymore. Yeah. That you're totally right. They used to do that, and they they stopped. used to do that all the time, and they don't anymore. And it, again, it's I kind of think about it as fashion too, where you know fashion's never finished, or there's always like the trends in fashion where things will come back and and style over and over again. I mean, take a look at back in we'll use new metal as perfect example. Late nineties, early two thousands, it was it was the thing, and then it yeah. became the yeah. dirtiest term in metal outside of Nickelback, and then it kept going on, and all of a sudden 2019, 2020 comes around, more bands are messing around with it, and now it's like it's the hottest thing again. It's just like the. Uh, it's just gonna keep going like this. So all of a sudden, harmonics in a riff that's as a as like a core of it, you're gonna start seeing it probably go up and up and up. I'll be like, hey, 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 Junk Bunny did it first. Yeah, dude. Bitches, you gotta give us credit for that one song. Yeah. <laughs> it's all because of Suffocator by Junk Bunny that turned it back up. I mean, think about all the bands that you know. Oh, they started this style. They started this like they started this style, or they're the pioneers of this. Sometimes you know, if you look at it, it's like, well, why did that never get big? Well, I hope this one gets big and is like, you know, oh, who who's like the founder of like new metal? It's like, well, corn's still big. So eh? they are. Yeah, they are. We'll bring it back that way. Well, guys, before we wrap this up, I have one more question for you guys. You ready for it? Hit me. It is one of my favorite questions to ask bands that bring in the podcast because it allows us to get to know the music that you guys love, but also gets us to listen to more new music as well. So I've got one, two, three guys there. I'm looking for one answer from each of you. So collectively, can you guys give me three bands or artists that you love that you would love to see more people get into? Incubus, 100%. was my favorite band of all time. So well, that's right. tough, but... I think I actually have my answer. Who people should listen to that, that? Like maybe not a lot of people listen to. That's one of my favorite bands right now. Is Balancing Composure. Oh. Okay, hang on. I gotta. Is that I, yours? No, 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 no. I wasn't. I gotta look at my spot. Balancing bro. Composure. They're like a little. They're rock, but like they also have like a lot of like more chill stuff too. Dude, I think I'm gonna say it. I think I'm gonna say Invent Anime, bro. I I know like they're getting they're on the come up. And people are are listening to them, but. I am recommending this album to like everybody I know right now. With Heavener, I love I I love Invent Animate. I was it because I like once you, once I heard Incubus, I'm like, well, that's a bigger one than Invent Animate. I'm like, yeah, more people can get into that one. But once Seth came out with his, I'm like, now that's the kind of band that I'm ho always hoping for because I love to hear about the bands that no one really knows about or that are just starting to get like some kind of traction, and then we can get more people to listen to them because then we just continue to grow the community that is the rock and metal family. Get more bands to notice, get more people to listen to them. Even for the bands that, you know, we all know of. And we still want to get more people to listen to. Because, trust me, I think I had someone throw out, like, corn one time. I was like, sure about that? Okay. I guess more people yeah. listen to corn then. If we're going for, like, you know, smaller groups. <laughs> uh, I found one uh, the other day called Druidus. There's a, a song called Lavender by them. And it's... It's phenomenal. It's really good. That is, that is actually really good. They got like, they have less monthly listeners than us. That song slaps. Yeah, Lavender is really good by them. Um, yeah. I wonder if I can think. I don't know. I, I don't listen to a lot of stuff. Like, Seth is really good at like finding new bands and stuff. Kind of, sort of. Kind, kind of, of yeah, no, Bouncing Blue is great. I do want to say about Invent Anime, the song that got me into Invent Anime is I saw it on YouTube, uh, Immolation of Night. <gasps> It's like one of the heaviest. It's not maybe not not like the heaviest song I've ever heard, but it's heavy in a way that just hits. So if I'm like on a run or something, and Immolation of Night comes on, dude, I start flying, bro. It's <laughs> awesome. That song is so awesome. That breakdown, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, it's so cool. It's like Max on run. He's just going like this. All of a sudden, that song goes on. 
the mm-hmm. arms turn fully parallel and it's just dude these legs can get pretty long bro really quick you would, <laughs> you would it. i can glide like a gazelle <laughs> well now everyone's got to go listen to invent animate so you can run and glide like a gazelle with junk bunny well guys as we bring this episode to its conclusion one thing that to do is give you guys a chance to say whatever you want to say plug we're gonna plug promote we're gonna promote at the end of the episode so gentlemen the floor is yours uh starting over our debut album check it out um we think it's pretty cool follow us on instagram (laughs) share us share our videos send (laughs) send this video to 12 people that you think like um love the government love the government (laughs) definitely like the government if you love the government send this video to your mom uh (laughs) yeah Like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to Chord Progression Podcast. Yes. Um, Dude, thank you for having us again. I really appreciate it, man. It's nice to talk to you again. It was nice to talk to you again, Mac. It was nice to meet you too, Isaac and Seth. And I'm going to have some fun cutting this one off for some like shorter <laughs> content because I'm going to use <laughs> probably the TikTok. You guys got banned for like, not like they've been all of a sudden. Send this to people who like the government, the government. <laughs> i'm gonna have some fun with this one but now it's let's have, end this episode with three things first things first once again we got junk bunny right here and you don't want to miss out on them so you're gonna go script to the podcast where it says find junk bunny online there'll be links and labels for everything where you can find him on social media except for tiktok because that's a 10-year ban that we're not even gonna go near so you, like, still, you can still, still find us we just i don't think we can promote anything i don't know if we can still post but we're gonna find out it's a mess it's a mess anyway it's a mess so still go check it out if you feel like it i guess also go check out where you can find them online where you can get some merch where they're gonna be playing live shows and check out starting over if you have not already and if you have checked out starting over we'll start it over again and check it out again it's the perfect album that just keeps starting it over just keep it on repeat do, 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 do. all that good stuff now step number two mac i made you a promise the first time you came on the podcast that when I see you perform live for the first time, first round's on me. I have not been able to see you perform live yet, so the promise now extends to the first two rounds are on me. However, oh, yeah. Seth, Isaac, still first round's on me for you guys because it's your first time here. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get silly, stupid, to. drunk. Woo! I'm looking forward to it, dude. Perfect. And now as we wrap up this podcast, the third thing I have to say is I cannot by saying goodbye because it's your second time on the podcast, Mac. I want to thank you for that. Thank you guys for coming on. I do not want to be the last time you guys are on the podcast. I want to make sure we do this again in the future. Maybe not wait 230 episodes. And I made you the promise. I got to keep it. So this is not goodbye, my friends. This is. I'll see you later. See you later, see you dude. Later. Thanks for having us. Woo! Well, folks, with my interview with Mac Isaac and Seth from the band Junk Bunny. And now it's time for Kevin's final thoughts. So when I think about this, this band what i remember is is you know mac at the beginning of it from our first episode episode 300 on how it was just him a one-man show how his drummer was just left and everything that was going on there now a couple years later i mean full band behind him and as we look at their music it's all about what they want to do with it and i like the fact that they said they didn't want to go necessarily heavy or go into the metal route because that's just not what they wanted to do they didn't want to dive as deeply into that idea because i They felt like it limits them and it makes a lot of sense. But if they don't dive in and they just, you know, dip their toes in the water a little bit, bring out influence every now and again, it can absolutely make a world of difference. And they can go lighter. They can go any which way they want. But by keeping more of that like alternative, sometimes post-hardcore, sometimes shoegazy, sometimes heavier style vibiness and atmosphere to the songs, you're really going so many other different directions and really try this out. There are so many great things this band could do. And if you're not getting into them, I really don't know what's wrong with you. So best way to get them is go to the description of the podcast below where it says find junk bunny online and symbols for everything you're going to be there. So be sure to go check it out. Also be sure to hit subscribe to the Corporate Rush Podcast right down here. If you're on YouTube, hit the follow button on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Make sure you like the episodes while helps pushing the algorithm. Find us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you guys from Junk Bunny. I'll see you again soon. And that now. That's what you guys think for listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one. So I'm the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all. Oh, yeah.